everybody, welcome to Nga. Um, this is a different style of video today. This is going to be literally just a video essay, being that I am making a video on a really interesting essay that I wrote a long time ago um, on the connection between the Nadine and Yeniseian language families. That language connection has always fascinated me, and I wrote an essay on it a little while ago for school, and I just thought it was a pretty good essay and an even more interesting kind of linguistic phenomenon and theory going on. So I'm literally just going to read this essay out for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. The Nadine Yeniseian language family hypothesis posits that two series of languages once considered to be isolated from all other languages in the world are actually distantly connected. These languages are the Yeniseian languages of Central Siberia and the Nadine languages of North America. The separation between these languages, if they are indeed directly related to each other, is not only thousands of years, but thousands of miles apart, making direct proof difficult to confirm. Linguists and anthropologists have used several methods of examining the languages and the people who speak them in search of the possibility of a common ancestor between the groups. As several cognates and similarities in the grammatical structures of the various languages in this proposed macro family have been found, making this hypothesis the most widely accepted of any of the many theories that have attempted to connect Amerindian languages to those of the Old World. The genetics of the modern speakers of these languages also show evidence of containing a common ancestor, as suggested through Y-DNA haplogroup similarities. Several issues exist with uh, proving the existence of this family, though. Uh, there are several differences in the phoneme content in each language. Language, um, and each language family in general that are very severe relative to typical language changes over time. Finding further evidence proves to be difficult as there are very few surviving speakers of the Yeniseian languages in Russia, lessening the chance of their language being fully studied in time before they you know, go extinct. Overall, the Nadine Yeniseian language family is widely considered to be the first known language family connection to span between the Old World and the New World, which can add massive amounts of missing history to the story of the human species. In order to understand the origin of the theory of the Dene Yenisean language family, it is necessary to understand the reason for the investigation of the subject. It is a firmly held belief of the scientific community that humans migrated to the Americas from Asia over the once surfaced and forest land bridge of Beringia thousands of years ago, being that the people who migrated were modern humans who certainly spoke language and that all modern humans come from a common ancestor. Etymologists have been searching for a link between the Old World and New World languages. The first similarity found was the connection between what become known as the Yupik languages, a series of Eskimo Aleut languages that are spoken in northwestern Alaska and the easternmost corners of Russia. This language family only contains the Inuit and Yupik languages and is considered to be an independent language family brought to North America in a separate and later migration than the cultures that migrated further south. The Yenisean language family is spoken in the Yenisei River Valley in the Krasnoyarsk Krai of Russia, once host to a myriad of cultures and languages since the 1990 death of the Yuk language, the Ket language, has been been the only surviving member of the family, and there have been little to no efforts of reviving the dead ones. The Ket language is dwindling rather rapidly, with the current estimation of native speakers at approximately 200 people. Because of this lack of numbers, there have been very few in-depth studies collecting a compendium of the grammar and vocabulary. There are a few existing online databases that contain only a few hundred words that can be translated from Ket into other languages. Only one town in the world, the village of Kellogg in the Krasnoyarsk Krai, still teaches teaches the Ket language in school, and it is likely that there are no longer any living monolingual Ket speakers. This language family sits as, supposedly, an isolate within a sea of Turkic, Mongolic, and Sino-Tibetan languages. Several attempts have been made to forge connections between the Yeniseian languages and other isolates such as Basque, the Caucasian languages, Japonic, but none of these have shown nearly as much success and academic support as that of the Nadine languages of North America. The Nadine language family is a large collection of languages that spans across northwestern North America. Some of these languages include the Tlingit languages of Alaska and Canada, the Tanana language in western Canada, and even the Navajo language in Arizona and New Mexico. Unlike what remains of the Yeniseian languages, there are dozens of surviving Nadine languages, adding up to several hundred thousand total speakers across North America. The largest and most well-documented of these languages are the aforementioned Tlingit and Navajo languages. Several online and 
physical resources are available to translate and identify the structure and complexities of these two languages. These languages have historically been in decline since colonization, but most Nadine languages have seen resurgence in the past 50 years as their cultures have become more appreciated by society as a whole. The idea that the Dene Yenisei language family could be a reality originated from Professor Edward J. Vida of Western Washington University after information about the Ket languages in Siberia came to public knowledge following the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s. The region surrounding Western Washington is historically the home for several Nadine languages, and the realization of cognates between several of these languages and those of the Ket people inspired Vida to advance on his theories. If proven to be true, the hypothesis made by Vieta would be the first confirmed macro family between the Old World and the New World, and therefore one of the most significant discoveries in the field of historical linguistics in recent history. As what limited resources that could be pulled from the Ket people came into the hands of researchers, the more evidence there seemed to be in favor of the theory, as over 110 easily identifiable cognates could be found. Several elements of the grammatical structures were also found, such as the shared tonality between the Navajo language and the Ket language, and more. As will be further explored in the following paragraphs, the theory does not work out perfectly, but has managed to become the most widely accepted macro family suggested to come about in a long time. There are dozens of cognates that can be found using the existing catalogs of Ket vocabulary as compared with North American Nadine languages. Yeah, for everyone's sake, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce these things, but I'm going to leave links in the descriptions to where you can find the IPAs. These, along with hundreds of other examples, show the basis of Vida's claims, and it is obvious that these words are similar either through coincidence or the theorized language family. There are definitely differences between these languages, as they are different languages that have been separated and exposed to different cultures for a long, long time. That is, if the languages were ever connected in the first place. There are just a small collection of the 110 cognates that Vida has suggested to exist. If these languages are truly related to the same common ancestor, then there are likely thousands of other words that share some other form of common etymology. However, the fact that nearly 15,000 years are believed to have passed since the Diné migration to the Americas means that, at the rate of natural language change, it's going to be nearly impossible to prove any more of these vocabulary terms having common relations with each other. In terms of the grammatical structure and the functions of the Yenisean and Diné languages, there are a few examples of commonalities that can be shown to be more than coincidental. The Ket word ka is a function word that denotes in or at, like a locative sort of word, which can be compared to the Tlingit word kayese which is an adjective signifying nearby. Navajo contains nine personal pronouns, <laughs> but Tlingit contains 14. The Ket language contains only seven official pronouns, but they take several forms and cases depending on what part of speech they're in. The Tlingit language follows a subject-object-verb order, as does the Ket language. Navajo, however, has managed to become much more agglutinative over the years and is essentially an object-subject-verb order language. Overall, in this situation, the Navajo language seems to be the largest outlier, as the southern Athabascan branch of languages is the furthest physically and temporally separated from the larger Nadine family. It was exposed to thousands of years of interaction with other language families such as the Yiddo Aztecan and the Algonquian families. Another significant piece of evidence that can be used in support of the theory is that the Yenisean people and the Nadine people share a common ancestor that can be seen in the genetic similarities between the surviving members today. Upon an examination of the Y-DNA haplogroups found predominantly in the Ket people and the Nadine people, it can be found that they both majorly share the haplogroup CM217. The presence of this haplogroup extends from Kazakhstan in the west to Florida and Venezuela in the east, following a temporal continuum going from the Old World to the New World over the Bering Strait. By far the heaviest concentration of these genes that exist today are found in the NSA River Valley and in specifically the areas of northwestern North America where the speakers of the Nadine languages can be found. While the genetics cannot be used as direct proof that the languages of these people shared a common ancestor, it can be used as proof that upon the emergence of this haplogroup approximately 15,000 years ago, there was a male human common ancestor that connects all of them together. If the language family truly began with this common ancestor, then the 15,000 years of migration and contact with other people certainly contributed to the difficulty of finding more connections between its modern descendants. All of this evidence contributes to the support 
in the academic community of Edward Vaida's theory, even though with the current methods of linguistic research, it's currently impossible to dig much deeper into the grammar and vocabulary of these languages without making too hasty of extrapolations. With that in mind, there are a few researchers, most notably Lyle Campbell of the University of Hawaii, who do not believe in this hypothesis and have provided some evidence to attempt to debunk it. Campbell has pointed out that the Ket language utilizes only 11 consonantal phonemes, whereas Tlingit uses 47 consonantal phonemes. Not only this, but despite the 35 extra phonemes that Tlingit contains, it is lacking common phonemes such as P and B that Ket does contain. There are many more possible sounds in the Nadine language than in the languages like Ket. This, according to Campbell, could potentially invalidate the majority of the cognates that Vida claims to have discovered between the languages, since Vida had disregarded consonant prefixes and suffixes, looking only to use the most basic of sounds contained in the words in order to compare them to each other. There are a few examples of words that do still qualify as potential cognates to Campbell, However, the majority of them seem very doubtful. According to the claims of Campbell, there is no point in furthering the research into the subject, as over the course of thousands of years, if there ever even was a common ancestor, there have certainly been so many sound shifts over time that a solid reconstruction is impossible. Campbell also declares that the attempts made by Vaida to create a proto dene yenisean reconstruction are filled with jump conclusions, and there's too many of them for it to really be taken seriously. In the end, where these two most prominent researchers find common ground is in their assessment that the amount of time that has passed since the languages lost contact with each other makes the act of proving further conclusions nearly impossible for the time being. Any diachronic method of analyzing the historical linguistics of the situation at hand shows such severe natural language change that any cognates and grammatical similarities that have been found so far are likely rarities and that more will be very difficult to come across. Also, the fact that the last of the Yenisean speakers are dying off means that any further attempts to analyze the language and its ancestors ancestry is completely dependent on time, likely only having one or two generations left in existence, unfortunately. All of these factors lead scholars to support the hypothesis, but they are completely unable to confirm it definitively until more evidence is found, if more evidence can be found. The Nadine and Yenisei language families have for a long time been considered isolated language families, unable to be linked definitively with any kind of macro family. But thanks to the research, there is now a collection of evidence that suggests otherwise, that these two language families do indeed form a revolutionary macro family. Examining vocabulary shows vast connections between the Ket and Tlingit languages with more tentative and weak links to the Athabascan language Navajo. Lyle Campbell does not believe that these cognates and similarities are anything more than coincidences resulting from confirmation bias, and that the the two language families should remain treated as isolates so as not to confuse the linguistic community in the future. Either way, with the hope of proving the existence of a linguistic common ancestor between Amerindian languages and those of a mysterious Siberian people, historical linguists largely accept and research in favor of this idea. The fact that the people in question heavily share genetic relation to each other further lowers the chance of the discoveries of Vida being coincidences. It's therefore very likely that the Nadine Yenisean language family is a reality, and with the slow crawl of production of further evidence, a missing piece of human Human history can be slowly uncovered. As linguistic techniques increase over time, this hidden history should be uncovered quicker, hopefully. However, this entirely relies on the cataloging of the cat language and continued interest in the subject. I live in the same state as the mighty Navajo Nation, and their language is so interesting to me. And the idea that it could be related to a macro family just intrigues me. And it was one of the reasons that I got into linguistics in the first place. So though this is a slightly controversial subject in terms of like the historical linguist community, I was just so turned on by this concept that it really launched me into everything that's happened in the past few years. So I thought this was very interesting. This essay I wrote a while ago, and I noticed that I called a language family isolated. Like, sure, maybe maybe Ket and like the languages in the NSA and River Valley can be considered an isolate because they don't share any larger connections. But like the Nadine language family is an entire language family. It's not actually an isolate. So 
I apologize if that triggered any of you. I, it triggered me too as I was reading through it. But overall, I think it was a pretty good essay and a really interesting subject. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will talk to you later. Yeah, so, not out. Bye-bye. Mwah.